Hello and welcome to Belong Group Wellness. I'm your host, Chad Bishop, and I'm excited that you've decided to join us on yet another episode right here on MPW Digital TV, Channel 9. This week's episode is all about connecting, and specifically the theme is belong. So we're talking about belonging to a group or an entity that's kind of greater than that of yourself, having faith. We're going to be specifically getting into a couple uh, aspects of the mind-body connection along those lines. In our fitness blue point, we'll be talking about yoga, and we'll be exploring a little bit about yoga. We'll also, later on in the show, talk about ways that you can get socially and physically active. And we even went down and participated in a Tai Chi class that's happening right here in Muscatine. This one was happening along the riverfront, so you're going to want to stay tuned to check out all of that. And we've got Ed Ellis in the studio as our community role model. He's got some exciting opportunities and a nice perspective to help us really examine what it means to be involved in a faith-based community. To help me with that, we have Jane Doppel. Jane, welcome to the show. Thanks, Chad. It's nice to be back. Well, great. Yeah, we're, we're trucking right along here with our Blue Zones. And this week, we're talking about connecting and the specific theme is to belong. Mm -hmm. We're talking about belonging to a faith-based community, essentially, and to having a, a purpose. So tell us a little bit about what belonging means to you and what it means from a Blue Zones perspective. I think when you look throughout the world and you see where the Blue Zones are, it's not in areas that are, um, it's all over the world. Okay. So one of the things that uh, I thought about when we were doing this episode is, you know, many, many cultures have many, many faiths. So there are, but there's usually one central theme that it's, you know, a supreme being or there's something that people connect to in their faith, whether it's Hindu or Judeo-Christian or even the indigenous people to the United States, the American Indian, it was Mother Earth. And so there is a faith that's there or a faith base and so I don't think we want to just exclude, but we want to be inclusive of all of those types of faith. So it doesn't matter specifically if we're talking about religion. It doesn't matter the specific religion, it doesn't sound like. And um, maybe spirituality is kind of another term that, that reminds me of this. I think that's a good one. Uh, spirituality essentially uh, is a belief or having faith that there exists something, a power greater than yourself, belief in an entity beyond the physical realm, if mm -hmm. you will. So that could be for some people, if you're Christian, it could be a God uh, or Jesus Christ in some entities. But we're basically, as far as Blue Zones goes, we're talking about attending a community-based faith service four times a month is what the research is suggesting will add four to 14 years to your life. So the centurions, the, the groups of people across the world that were researched, uh, there were 256 of them, all of them except for four actually had faith-based communities as part of their lifestyle. So this is really a common thread throughout all of the Blue Zones in the world that we're aspiring to be a little bit more like here in Muscatine. It's a sense of purpose. A sense of purpose they mm -hmm. all have. That's a, uh, another kind of way to think about this. Mm -hmm. Having a sense of purpose will, will help you uh, have a more a well existence. So maybe you are currently attending a faith community and maybe you're not if you're not this would be a great chance to consider recommitting yourself maybe you have in the past and if you haven't at all we have a guest who will help us think about ways that you can connect for the first time if you're thinking about it or at least have an opportunity to think about what having faith might mean to your current lifestyle and it might mean a sample of something that might appeal to you. Yeah, we're going to give you a sample. Right, yep. <laughs> right. So, well, that's basically it. What else can we say about this? Because it's kind of a, it's a very general idea. That whole concept of belonging is what we're talking about. Connecting with others, and specifically, though, we've talked about connecting through physical activity and walking groups, and we've mm -hmm. talked about connecting in a variety of ways. We're kind of getting specific here. If you want to aspire to be like the blue zone, um, bl bl blue zone areas in the world geographically, they all attend service is of some sort four times a month. So basically once a week. Now you think it matters which day? It depends on how, how you were raised okay. and the culture that you were in. And I, I think one of the things we've learned is it, even out here at MCC, uh, we have kids that come here uh, from all different kinds of cultures with all different faiths. 
but we're a melting pot. And that's really what uh, the whole United States is too. It's a tolerance, it's an understanding. Um, it doesn't mean that one is right and one is wrong in some cases. Uh, there may be people that don't feel that way. But uh, for me personally, uh, I, I think that there's room for all of us, especially with some of the, the faiths that have some of the same principles. So as you were speaking, I'm kind of thinking about what, what specifically about a faith-based community might be allowing people to actually add years to their life. And, and a lot of it might have to do with the idea of if you have faith in, a, in an afterlife, let's just say, mm -hmm. that would sort of take some of the stress or some of the, the pressure, um, maybe make things a little uh, more um, workable in our, in our physical existence right here. Do you think there's anything about the, the faith in that? Or what do you think well, they're I, talking I about? Think, I think there is. Uh, and and it, while you were speaking, I thought of the, of the Hindu religion mm -hmm. and some of the others that believe that there are different stages that you go through in your, in your life, the next life or the next life, or the, you know, to try to get to that, the highest point uh, in, in their religious experience. So, you know, we as, as mostly uh, Judeo-Christian, especially here in Muscatine, uh, most of us look at the Christian faith. So, you know, to have that tolerance for some of the others um, is important, but also it's important for us to get our children started down a path where they find that sense of belonging with a purpose that is spiritual. Okay. Well, we've got a, a really good community role model. We will talk about this a little bit more, and I'm curious to kind of think if we can brainstorm different faith-based communities, because I bet if we, if we really think about it, there are some faith-based communities that's, that you might at home already be a, a part of that you might not realize. If you're going to a, a church service on Sunday, then yeah, that counts. I mean, that's obviously mm -hmm. one way that you can uh, indulge yourself in this particular lifestyle uh, blue zone of connecting and belonging through community faith. So we'll get a little bit more in depth and a little bit later, but before we get to that, we're kind of talking about with faith and belonging, uh, uh, a mind-body connection. At least that's the way I kind of interpret it. There's a spirituality to this whole concept. And because of that, one way that you can really get connected with yourself and therefore allow you to understand uh, the realm outside of yourself is through yoga, which combines both physical activity and um, mental meditation, if you will. So let's learn a little bit about yoga right now. Considering it's thousands of years old, it might seem silly to say that yoga has come a long way in recent years. But as mind-body exercise continues to take hold of the fitness industry, the practice of yoga has moved from the alternative to the mainstream. Today's hectic lifestyle has left many people wondering how to manage the stress that comes along with it. While regular aerobic exercise and strength training can help, they aren't the complete answer. Some experts and practitioners believe that yoga is the piece you need to complete the puzzle of maintaining fitness in both the body and the mind. Now before you start conjuring up images of zoned out new agers and pretzel-like positions chanting mantras, consider this. Yoga is an ancient practice that can help you deal with the stress of modern life. And more and more people, stressed out or not, are discovering the benefits of yoga. In fact, it has been reported that more than 11 million Americans are now practicing some form of yoga. Yoga, which means to yoke or unite, is the practice of uniting all aspects of a person's body, mind, and spirit through physical postures, breathing exercises, and meditation. Flexibility, strength, and muscle tone improve quickly as the mind and body work together in harmony and unison. For some, yoga is a primary means of relaxation something that is often difficult to achieve in the high-stress, high-speed modern world. Regardless of which type you choose, yoga is an excellent way to stretch and strengthen the body, focus the mind, and relax the spirit. In fact, most modern stress reduction techniques are based on the principles of yoga. Available research indicates that stress-related diseases respond favorably to this type of approach. Hypertension, insulin resistance, pain, 
cardiovascular disease, anxiety, and depression are all beneficially affected by regular participation in mindful exercises such as yoga. The best way to get started in yoga is to find a class that appeals to you. Find out where yoga classes are being held in your area and stop by to see what you think. There are many different approaches to yoga. Some focus on breathing, others focus on holding specific postures, and it's important to find the one that appeals to you the most. For a more intense yoga workout, choose Ashtanga or Power Yoga. This type involves a series of very intense yoga postures done in succession. This class, which is a vigorous workout, can help develop strength as well as flexibility. Yoga is a great way not only to relax, but also to improve your performance in other activities. Once you have learned a few yoga moves and breathing techniques, they can easily be incorporated into your regular fitness routine. So don't let any preconceived notions of yoga keep you from enjoying the benefits of this dynamic mind-body exercise. So that was a little bit about yoga, and hopefully you've learned a little bit about how you might be able to establish a mind-body connection as part of your physical activity aspirations and your endeavors to become more well. And that was all part of our theme today, which is connecting through the process of belonging to faith-based community. We're kind of, I'm thinking about this as a form of spirituality, and yoga is definitely one way in which you can uh, achieve that. Now moving along, we're going to talk specifically about this concept of belonging, and we've got a great community role model who really is a great representative of this whole process. With us right now is Ed Ellis, and welcome to Belong Group Wellness. Oh, thank you. Thank you for having me. Well, before we get into the, the topic at hand, let's talk a little bit about who you are. Give us a brief bio, if you wouldn't mind. Okay, well, I'm originally from Chicago. I met my wife here. She's from Muscatine. Okay. That's my tie-in here. Uh, I've lived here since 99. I've taught here at the college, and also I've worked, now I'm currently working with the Muscatine Community School District. Okay. So I work with youth, so I've been working with youth and been working with families in Muscatine for the last 12 years. So you work uh, through the school district, and then you also have now a new endeavor yes. that you're working on. That's sort of what inspired me to ask you on the show, which is, tell us a little bit about that, and then okay. we'll kind of get into things. Well, uh, I'm going to be the uh, campus pastor for Connection, a missional community. Okay. It's going to be a new, new church here in town. And Brand. so, in fact, I've retired from teaching here. Okay. So, uh, but one of the things that I'm excited about is that we get a chance to, we, what we would call it, plant a church here in this community. Now, Connection, the most uh, missionary, uh, missional community is based in Bettendorf. And so we've been up there for the past year. And so they're going to plant us back here in Muscatine. Okay. So I'm excited about that opportunity. Well, yeah, that's perfect then, because we're going to be talking on the show then about ways that you at home can get connected, reconnected, or mm -hmm. establish a connection through a faith-based community. And if you are currently looking for one, we've got a new one coming yes. to Muscatine, yes. coming yes. right here called yes. Connection. So we're going to talk about that later. But first, let's talk about this notion of a faith-based community. Now, if you were listening earlier, you noticed that we're, mm -hmm. we're not specifying a specific religion right. or a specific building or day, no, but right. what, what do you understand or how does connecting through a faith-based community work for you? Like, what, what is it about this that, that works? I think for me, it works, uh, the main thing is relationships. Okay. I mm -hmm. believe that uh, as it talks about the blue zone, uh, it adds years to your life when you have people that you can connect with and, and you'll go through the highs and the lows of life like though a wedding, a high or a death, sure. you know? And so with that, it, it keeps you connected in, with other people through relationships. It's all about sharing life together. I'm sure with the research that's shown in, in the wellness group, a lot of the centurions had uh, people that would check in on them. Mm -hmm. You know, they, they had a sense that, hey, even if I don't go out for a couple of days, somebody's gonna be bamming on my door, say, hey, where are you? We need you. And I think there's that mutual accountability that uh, being connected with, uh, with the group, it, it provides. Yeah, I like what you're talking about there because a big part of Belong Group Wellness is establishing meaningful relationships. Yes. So I like to combine the, the three pillars of my philosophy are physical activity, healthy mm. nutrition, and meaningful relationships. And so mm. what, what you're kind of making me think about is we've talked in previous episodes about establishing relationships by putting your family first. Yes. And you're kind of making, this sounds like an extended family. Yes, uh, because what we found is that, uh, yes, you would say that connection, the missional community is more in the Judeo-Christian tradition, but what we've done is, how do we value? Yes, we have a relationship with Jesus Christ, but what of that 
what are, are some of our values when we talk about balance or reconciliation or even family or even encouragement humor mm -hmm. uh, not just looking within the traditional church for those uh, purposes you can look out in movies or, or art uh, very especially with art some of the things that that uh, the things that come about that inspire you and say hey that's life and so I think uh, part of being in a, uh, especially a faith-based community is enjoying life as you're going through life together okay so somebody let's talk a little bit about different faith-based communities in Muscatine okay. or Muscatine is a pretty good example of, mm -hmm. of, of the Midwest so mm -hmm. let's talk about what happens at a religious service as far as what if somebody's looking to reconnect mm -hmm. what well, let me ask you this and Jane might be able to help with this but sure. why would somebody stop connecting why do you think people stop attending their faith-based service you know what is it about it that might be a, a, a negative like you know well I think sometimes I think it sometimes always, always goes back to values maybe that that church or whatever that that community isn't the right fit or, or sometimes people feel that disconnection. Mm -hmm. Maybe they, they'll go in a place and they've been there for a long time, and hey, with relationships, sometimes it can get messy. You, you have a, a breakup or, okay. or, or a bad experience, and all of a sudden you withdraw. Or maybe you're understanding that, hey, what I'm living out maybe on Sundays, or what's talk, you know, someone's talking to me on Sundays, but that's not connected with my real life. That's interesting. So, uh, some people then might have attended a certain church or community, yeah. and over time their values strayed a little bit mm -hmm. or, or the particular perspectives, mm -hmm. and they stopped. And so this is an opportunity then to reconnect. Like, it, you know, it's not a done deal just because you had an experience <laughs> right now. Let's give it another shot. Well, basically, yeah, and you're, and you're talking about what connection a missional community is all about. In fact, our slogan, if you would call it that, is reconnecting creation with the creator. Okay. And, and when we talk about that is, Everyone has unique gifts and talents, and we really establish that and, and really build that as a community. In fact, when people talk about, let's just say the Judeo-Christian Bible, it's meant to be read in community. So a lot of times in our society, everything, the message we keep getting from the media is isolate yourself, you know, bigger, faster, stronger. But that's really more individualistic versus, hey, I should check in on my neighbor, I should check in on, on some of these things. And here's a common value that we have, that we value family. So I'm going to, you know, totally, hey, you may not even have to come to church on Sunday, or maybe let's, let's have another day uh, to worship versus a Sunday. So it's really forming a, a community that has a purpose, and your purpose is, hey, let's get back to these values, let's get back to the relationships. And so I think that that would be very important in our, in our Let's kind of get specific to what the difference would be between a group of people getting together to mm -hmm. volunteer maybe mm -hmm. to clean up a park that's in disarray. Yes. They're, they're a group, they're connecting, they're supporting each other. That same group then, or, or a, a, a cross town, another group is going to a, a building and worshiping, as you mentioned. Mm -hmm. What are the differences? What, what are, what's good about one? They both are great, uh, mm -hmm. but wh what's the difference? You know, Because I'm trying to key in on what makes this particular idea of faith and belonging different than just having an extended family and healthy relationships. And, and, and that's the, I think that's the key. There really shouldn't be a difference. Okay. If I worship on Sundays, if I'm a part of this worshiping community, based on what we believe in our core values, we should be able to go out into the community and, and affect change that way. So it's not so specific, it's, the yeah. worshiping of uh, yeah. Jesus, let's just say. Yes. It's the uh, idea of getting together as a group with a common kind of value, and that particular day it might be that we want to get together and re-beautify a, uh, a park. Right. And that in and of itself could be a faith-based community. But again, it, it is focused on our relationship with Jesus in, in regards to some of his teachings, not okay. just saying, you know, Jesus was like, well, based, Jesus said we should be in church on Sundays. Well, he also said to go and do other things out in the community. And I think that's where that balance comes in, is that we, we're, we're based on the teachings or we're based on how we connect with each other, and then we can go out into the community and do different things and actually look for mm -hmm. needs. For example, uh, we could have uh, backpack awareness, or I mean, back, you know, or, or back to school uh, supplies. Wherever there's a need in the community, you would go and meet it based on your values, not only your values, but as a community. Okay. It's not just a humanitarian thing. It's, it's no. more of an innate part of your soul. Yeah. I mean, if you want to get into, you know, why you, you're motivated to do those things and make those connections. 
uh, maybe the you know the reasons uh, at the very beginning because mm -hmm. you're testing out or getting back into a church mm -hmm. might be that you know uh, I like them because they do loaves and fishes or I like them because mm -hmm. they always help with um, other things in the community you know most of the churches in the community have some kind of a uh, touch or an outreach into loaves and fishes yeah. and that's feeding the poor those were all of those uh, things that we were taught to do when we were young mm -hmm. in a uh, religious home. Yeah, and I think sometimes it, 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 it helps to get back to those teachings. Because mm -hmm. Sometimes you can do things and not know why you're doing them. And I think what uh, obviously the connection of missional community and other uh, faith-based organizations will give you the opportunity to what am I about? What do I believe? We're talking earlier about knowing your purpose then. Yes. Uh, sort of a, yeah. an idea mm -hmm. is that you're on this planet if you know why, let's mm -hmm. say for example, yeah, yeah. your purpose becomes clear and I think that becomes a reason why people have um, healthier lives or are more well when they do attend faith-based communities. Which so. It gives you a reason to wake up in the morning, yep. point blank. Yeah. Why, why, why am I even up right. this morning? What, what do I have to do? And that's what we've asked people to do. Mm -hmm. And it's prob this is probably maybe the hardest episode we've had or the hardest premise that we've had in the Blue Zones because it really means that you have to do some soul searching. Yes. You have to yes. get inside yourself. Yes. And if you're not used to doing that, then, you know, this is what we're asking you to do. And once you've, once you've done that and reached inside and you come up with some of those things that um, make that connection, uh, make that connection to a higher power and, mm -hmm. and you know, it might be something that... Um, somebody hadn't had that opportunity yet. Mm -hmm. And I think sometimes with faith-based communities as well, you need to also provide a safe place. Mm -hmm. you, 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 you said it, you got it perfect in terms of the wrestling. Well, if, if, if I'm talking about my core values and what do I believe, there, it, that's a process. It takes time to wrestle. It takes time to go through the, those things. So you need a place, almost like with the gym. You can go to the gym and work out. There's no one there that's you know, calling you overweight or chastising you. You, you, you want to go somewhere where you can work out and, and wrestle and, and apply pressure and be in a safe environment. That's what I believe the, the, the buildings or the faith-based communities or uh, the churches around town okay. should be a safe place for someone to reconnect uh, with whatever they would call their higher power but obviously, uh, it, it's a safe place. That's, a, that's an important point. I'm, I'm thinking that maybe if you don't know your purpose right now, yes. would you be somebody or your group be an uh, opportunity yes. to answer that question for somebody? Because like, uh, if you're thinking about going to a faith-based community and you don't know your purpose, it sounds like the wrestling with your values, the, the, the sermons or the, mm -hmm. the, the opportunities that you give them will help them really get to know themselves just that little bit better. And one of our philosophies is uh, in connection to missional community is you belong before you believe. So all the, the words that you're saying, oh. belonging, connection, mm -hmm. those are things that we provide that safe environment. If you have no clue of what your purpose is, that you are already a part. It's not, you know, go, if you go three to four months, then, you know, kind of put you on a trial basis. No, you come right in and you're welcomed in and we'll, we'll just kind of take it from there. You belong first. Yes. Okay, so that sounds really um, welcoming then for people yes. that maybe have never connected with mm -hmm. your faith or haven't since they were children. Yes. This sounds like a nice step, and I think that's what I knew about connection in general and why I invited you on the show as well is because this seemed like a good one uh, that people might want to start with or if they're switching uh, different, maybe they're in the, in, in the market for a new uh, opportunity, yeah. this would yeah. be a one to look into. So tell us a little bit about what, what you think your uh, connection is going to be about, you know, what's, what's it going to be like? Because what I'm kind of wanting to think of is I'm wondering if there's a, a tour or a survey of all the churches and religious opportunities and faith-based communities in Muscatine. I think there's a website that at least lists them, but mm -hmm. they'd each, if I asked them this, they'd have a paragraph or, or mm -hmm. they'd have a mission. They would, they would answer it differently. Each church would say, this is what we're about. They're all ultimately kind of the same but they're a little bit different. What's yours about? Well, what we're about is leaving the building, leaving the facility and going out into the community. Okay. In fact, we have a t-shirt that, that will say our logo on the front, connection, reconnecting, creation with the creator, and then on the back, the church has left the building. Huh. So <laughs> it, you don't have to come to our building. You don't have to come to our programming. You can go out wherever we'll find you just in life. 
if, if you come to our, uh, if you happen to come to one of our gatherings, we hope to inspire you to be able to affect your world. I'm not going to go out to your job. I can't go to your job as a campus pastor. You're already out in the community and, and, and you can touch your world wherever you are. And what that does is it gives you a sense of purpose. It gives you a connection that's not only about Sunday, it's every day. When I wake up every day, I have an opportunity. And even if I'm having a bad day, someone can come and check on me. Mm -hmm. Someone can, can come and encourage me. And so I think that that's one of those things that as we venture out into the community, we will begin to shape, we'll be shaped by how we fit the needs in this community. Okay, so that op uh, opens up opportunities for people that might be hesitant to physically attend at some point. So you're going to make uh, it aware through communicating that this is where we're going to be at Thursday or this is where we're going to be right. at Sunday afternoon. Just join us. Right, and for example, we, we can be at, at public places, for example. Uh, one, one thing that we've been doing this year is really been working with, uh, uh, I, I want to say, some of the other organizations in town, you know, such as, you know, after school programs or, or even, uh, I'm thinking with the YMCA, some, some of those programs where it's after school programs. Mm -hmm. and, and so, the big brothers, big sisters, you know, instead of, uh, you know, we, we, as a church, we're having this event and you come and join us, you know, guys, why don't we go and help out big brothers, big sisters? Why don't sure. you consider becoming a big brother or a big sister? Wow, yeah. So that's what I'm talking about. It's not necessarily programming in terms of come to us, <laughs> you know. No, go out and, and, we, can, and we can talk about it. There's, you can come in. In fact, we, we've removed the benches in our church. We're remodeling. Uh, we're, we're going to have like a coffee house style. So you can come and fill your cups up, you know, <laughs> bring your cups there. But it's a really laid back environment, and, and that's where uh, we, we want people to, to discuss what is, uh, what, what are their core, core values, what do they believe. And I know you work with some of the youth, and, yes. and especially in the junior high. How important is it for our children to have some connection with um, a, a road that would be uh, faith-based or maybe you know keep them from going down the wrong path because at some point in our our lives usually our preteens or teens we, we struggle and say you know which way do I want to go we mm -hmm. want to believe in something and, and maybe it goes in to a, a different path other than down uh, one that's a religious path. Well I think for example when we talk about the core values if we value them as, as, as individuals. I think uh, a lot of, we have a lot of brokenness in, in Muscatine. We have a lot of broken families. And so just maybe spending that time uh, mentoring them, kind of pouring into them, into their lives, saying, hey, you're okay. You know, you, you're going to make mistakes. You're going to make, uh, you know, different choices. And what we want to do is, is value them so much that they can also find, uh, well, what, what is it that I like to do? Maybe they have interest, but they may not have the resources. They may not even know that this is what I want to do. And if you would have someone that would kind of come alongside them and encourage them, I think that can give them an opportunity. And even if they do make mistakes, no one is necessarily cutting them off or, or you know, moving them away. I mean, some of the best times I've spent growing up in a church, uh, for example, was my grandfather. We would, we would uh, he was kind of the church janitor, and we would kind of go around barbecuing or just picking up trash together. Mm -hmm. Those were precious moments of he didn't have to tell me about the Bible stories or anything else, just us spending that time together. So I think it's just if kids know that you care about them, then they'll respond to that. But it's also a good time to tell, talk about the Bible study. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and for kids now, you can't assume that they've read the Bible. They're, they're going to have to see it. They're going to have mm -hmm. to say, well, this is what we mean by sharing. This is right. what this is. And then kids, they're, 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 they can get it. They're, mm -hmm. they're, they're, they're smart that way. So, yeah, that's sort of making me think about a lot of different things that happen in life. Life is tough. There's yes. a lot of yes. things. There's bullying. There's mm -hmm. People are abused. People's self-esteem can get shattered and, and whatnot, and then they end up having different issues. It sounds like one of the benefits of belonging uh, is in general is that a safe environment like you said in which people kind of go out of their way to be good to each other mm -hmm. and to establish with especially with children what's right and wrong if, if if you don't know that or have a sense of morals or ethics early on well that might be an issue later on in life when you have legal problems or relationship issues so setting a nice foundation 
would be uh, probably a recipe for success. Well, that, well, that's excellent because that's a, a core value that we have in terms of safety and destiny. You can't point someone to a place when they don't feel safe. Their biggest need is, is to be safe. So if you provide that safe environment, then they'll listen to, hey, I think you should go here, or I think you should try this. Or come with me. Here. Yeah, come with me. Yeah. Exactly, exactly. Because I think you're that kind of guy. <laughs> come with me. <laughs> <laughs> well, belong first, believe yes. second. Yes. Or then believe. Believe yeah. what? I mean, I know the answer to this kind of, but I just want to hear it from your mouth. What, what are you basically suggesting there? Well, for us, we're, we're believing in the teachings of, of Jesus Christ. We're believing in not in what his core values of a reconciliation that, hey, you can, no matter what you've done, you can come to Connection to Missional Community and feel the love and feel the warmth of Jesus Christ. And it's specifically for us is what does that mean? And we know that what worked 40 years ago, what worked 50 years ago is not going to work today. So it has to be a situation where people can sit down and discuss and talk and wrestle with. And that wrestling, be, yes. with, with part of that, I think the word that we're kind of skipping around is forgiveness. Yes. Because we haven't come out with that. So there's, you oh, know, that's excellent. Th that uh, when, when we wrestle, it's an internal struggle mm -hmm. sometimes. You know, it's like the, the good guy on the one shoulder and the mm -hmm. bad guy on the other shoulder. How do we reconcile that? How do we do that? Sure. And so the, you know, going to a faith-based uh, church or being in a faith-based organization uh, allows us to forgive ourselves mm -hmm. and to forgive others. And you know what? And when you do that, it reduces the stress level. Mm -hmm. It reduces the anxiety. It reduces yep. the tension okay. uh, that a lot of people, uh, you know, go through life with. Yeah. So that's excellent. You're right. Forgiveness. <laughs> yeah, there you go. That's... Forgive me for bringing it up. No, no. This is, no, we're modeling what happens really at Connection. I mean, that's, yeah. that's what it is. So there, there aren't pews per se. So what I'm kind of thinking might be happening is there's a, a, a I'll call it a lecture, but it might be called a sermon if I was to use the correct yeah. vernacular. But you're going to be imparting information. Yes. But is there an opportunity to then have these discussions? Is that kind of what yes. you meant by informal, like a coffee shop? Like, now yes. let's just talk about this. Yeah, we can just talk about it. It can either happen at that Sunday night. It can happen on Wednesday. Uh, Wednesday, okay. we'll have an opportunity. If you want to talk about the sermon, if you want to discuss some things that okay. you've even uh, found or encountered, uh, it can be a song. It can, in fact, uh, my first sermons I've been uh, teaching uh, over the summer, and some of my songs have been quote, unquote, secular songs, you know, just talking about the different mm -hmm. developments. Uh, my, my father passed this year, so I've been going through a lot of, of emotional like, wow, what does this mean now? I mean, I'm kind of disoriented. Mm -hmm. And my community uh, at Connection and Missional Community has really helped me to get through a tough, a yeah. tough loss. You That's know? a great use yeah. uh, opportunity right. to be connected in well, this yeah. way. You said at the beginning of when we were talking uh, about weddings and funerals mm -hmm. and, mm -hmm. and things, you know, there's really joyous times in our lives yes. and there's really sorrowful things. So you want to share those and you get a deep sense of, of connection when you're in a church that mm -hmm. uh, comes in and participates in those kind of things. Mm -hmm. So when we're talking about relationships and meaningful relationships, what I kind of like about the whole idea of faith and religion is that no matter what, if you belong first, then believe, there's always somebody, mm -hmm. you're never alone. No yeah, matter if yeah. you're alone, you're never alone because right. what you are uh, implying to me is that there's somebody, a higher power that exists mm -hmm. that, that is with you in your yes. heart, in your spirit. Yes. And so I think people, especially when they are at low points in their life mm -hmm. that have faith, aren't ever as low as they could be because no matter if they've got, maybe, maybe their friends and family are, are spread out across the world or, or, or whatnot, mm -hmm. they always have somebody that they're, that's there for them, that loves them, that cares about them. Yes. It's that spiritual high, higher power. Yeah. And uh, Jesus Christ Jesus is one Christ, opportun yeah, opportunity. One up, yeah. now, if, uh, if somebody were to join your, your group and they belonged, yes. and it's believe, belong first, believe, then believe, mm -hmm. what if they didn't believe in uh, the Bible or Jesus specifically? Would that ultimately be a deal breaker? Or, no. Or no. is that kind would, of something you need it, to? It would, not, it would not be. I, I think because for us, we, we understand that uh, everyone is at different levels. Everyone it's comes. It's a journey. Yeah, it's a journey. Mm -hmm. It's a journey. So, no, there isn't a, a, a thing. Of, you, you know, I'm giving you... 30 minutes to believe in Jesus or else. That's not what we're, we're about. I mean, hopefully you can observe and, and, and look at us and look at what, what's happening with us 
and then maybe you can make up your mind in that regard. Mm -hmm. We welcome your questions because we, again, all of us come to faith uh, initially from, from other ways. I mean, sure. we say that we're a Christian nation, but what does that really mean? Right. Yeah. So that's kind of, that's a good answer because what I'm hoping is that people that have, aren't currently involved with uh, a faith-based community mm -hmm kind of they have objections or they have reasons why they're not going and hopefully the way you answered that would would suggest to people that are watching that that oh, that's a great slogan belong first just get out there try these churches out or religious groups or faith-based communities connection is a great one to start with but there are many try them out and learn about yourself and then if it fits it probably will if it fits then then believe second or you know believe in this higher power other than yourself right. so we're going to wrap things up a little bit but tell us, like, what else do you want to say? Like, what, what do you want to say? Well, I'm just excited for the opportunity uh, to be in Muscatine. Okay. Uh, this is something that I, I'm passionate about because it gives families a sense mm -hmm. of kind of going back to what the basics of, of, you know, even if you're a single mom or a parent or you're, you're struggling, we can all come together and, and have the core values and really live out our faith. So connection... I want to get involved. Yes. I don't need a phone number or website necessarily. Just tell me in general what I need to do. Well, you, you can. You can you can visit us uh, on our website. It's www.connectionqc.org. Okay. Or you can just give me a call. My number is 299-0242. What if I just want to show up somewhere? Is you there, can just show up. Uh, we're, we're, on, we're 1523. We're on Hauser Street. Hauser Street, okay. Yeah, we're, we're across from the crossroads. You have left the building, but yes. at one point you're there, you're there long <laughs> enough so we're, we're we can... Just there, we're just there to take calls. You're, long, right, you're yeah. there long enough so we can at least show up. Exactly. Because that's exactly. getting complicated if you're all over. Yeah. I need to yeah. at least know where you're at. Yeah. You're not and at my house. Our, yeah, we're not in a house. We're, we have a facility. Uh, so it, it, it is in, in, on Hauser on Street. Street. 15, okay, well, great. Houser Brand Street. new opportunity in Muscatine, yes. among others. There's plenty of opportunities in Muscatine yes. to explore yes. belonging through... Uh, attendance at a faith-based community, getting to know a little bit about yourself and a spiritual higher power and exploring all that that can mean for you and then helping you establish meaningful relationships is what we're about. So thanks, Ed, for being on the show. And we're going to continue to explore our, uh, with our lifestyle well point. We're going to talk a little bit now about being physically active, but in a social way. So let's take a look at that. Okay, so now we're going to talk about eight ways to get fit and be social. Essentially, physical activity is one of the cornerstones of the Belong Group Wellness philosophy. But along with that, if you can combine a social element, we're talking about not just working out by yourself, but as a group, you can double your benefits, so to speak, by uh, establishing the meaningful relationships and the physical activity. So it's a win-win situation. Specifically, we're talking about having a socially active lifestyle because as you get older, it's, for, it's really important to maintain a strong social network and a physically active lifestyle. By merging your social life with your fitness program, you'll get some exercise while hanging out with your favorite people. The bonus, you'll have a great time, strengthen your friendships, meet new people, and stand track with your fitness goal. So let's find out how. We got eight, eight, eight ideas for you guys at home, some brainstorming. We're just going to give you eight ideas to get the ball rolling so you can be more physically active in a social way. Number one, Jane, you ready for the sure. journey? I'm ready. Okay, first one, we're going to go for a hike. So gather your friends and plan a day at the fitness uh, local statement, state park, national park, any kind of park. Trails. Pack a lunch, plenty of water, and your camera. That's all the ingredients you need. Friends, camera, lunch, trail, yeah, and go for a hike. There you go. Look at those people. They're hiking someplace, some sort of state park, but that's what it might look like, you know. You don't need much equipment, and anybody can do it. Are you a fan of hiking? Um, actually, I haven't done a lot of hiking, but I know uh, when I visited in Germany, yeah. that's one of the pastimes every Sunday. People will hike from village to village. Yeah. And there's hiking paths all over, and they get a, a walking stick, and they have a walking stick, and they take off for the whole day. Well, I know that we used to have something called a Volkswalk. I might be saying that wrong, but there's a term. A German, walk. There's a, a term walk. for it, yeah, uh -huh. Volkswalk. And, uh, and the same thing, yeah, Germans are all over this idea of walking as a group. Mm -hmm. 
Number two, another idea for how you can be more physically active, team sports. So recreational leagues are available for men and women of all ages and abilities. You'll get together and practice. You can practice games. You might even travel to tournaments. You can check with your local parks and rec department or search for softball, baseball, soccer, volleyball, tennis. All those are online. Do a search, Muscatine. Quite a few team sports opportunities for adults. How about uh, we bowling at like Sunnybrook? There you go. That's a team sport. <laughs> it is. Mm -hmm. So there's no physical limitation because that's a team sport that you can do. Right. Get exercise. Uh, get out and about with your friends and stay vital, stay mentally engaged. Mm -hmm. I think we got a lot of the sports. Is there any that you can think of in Muscatine? Softball, baseball, soccer, volleyball, tennis. Rugby. Rugby. There you go. <laughs> that's a tennis, that's definitely a team sport. Yes. Not for everybody, depending on your physical uh, aspirations. Right. <laughs> but I noticed that you can get involved in rugby without actually participating as well. So. Sure. But, yeah, that's a great that's example. Me. Yeah. <laughs> So team sports, a great activity. You know, when we were in high school or in college, we might have had an agenda to why we were participating. But now that we're older, we might not be trying to win a state title. We're just trying to live longer, healthier lives. You know, I, I think we'd be remiss if we didn't say band. Maybe it was a team sport. Uh, they're at, it's an athletic endeavor. Yeah, they're uh, walking and hiking, they're, marching yep, band. Yep, they are. So is there an adult marching band here in Muscatine? Am I, am I missing something? No, there is not Should an be, adult. Though. Right. I think there could be. Yeah. You, you know. They could march at the parades. Sure. Um, <laughs> um, well, let's move on with uh, talking about walking and marching. There's a walking group. Now, they don't have instruments, Jane, but they are walking. Whether it's ladies only, gents only, or mixed group, let the conversation flow as you rack up the steps and move towards better health. Walk around the neighborhood, at the mall, or a park. Take turns leading the walk and encourage each member to map out a different course for variety. If time allows, enjoy a hot or cool beverage together after your walk. So really ramp up the socializing. Walking the wise is a blue zone term, mm -hmm. but there you go. I Act was just going to mention the, the moais because that, that's a, a, a term that came from uh, Japan, Okinawa, and it's a great way to get uh, yourself out moving. Now, and walking know, school bus. Walking school bus, yeah, to get those kids out and about and the parents uh -huh. that lead the, they get a little walk right. thing as well. Now I don't think there are a lot of walking groups in Muscatine. Now, I took that photo from a place in California. So we as a community, I think have a little room for improvement. And if we became mm -hmm. Blue Zone certified, I bet that's one of the first things we'd start establishing formalized walking groups that maybe met at the mall at noon on Tuesday, for example. But in the meantime, start your own because there's really all you need is a couple friends who have an ambition to be healthy and well. And the walking does not have to be super fast or brisk. You're not trying to get out of breath or hurt yourselves. You're trying to connect but while exercising. And moving naturally. Moving naturally. So number four, put on your dancing shoes. Wow, even if you've never danced a step in your life, it's never too late to learn how. Learning how to swing maybe, tango, rumba, or even doing the hustle, great ways, and they're energizing, and you can sneak in some exercise. Dancing is, is an exercise. Some communities even offer dance clubs where members meet regularly to learn new steps. Now, I think that's a skill that's been lost. My parents, growing up, went to dances all the time, and yeah. people still come up to me and go, oh, I remember your mom and dad. They were great dancers. Yeah. And and they, it was a physical activity that they did almost every week, and they stayed in great shape. Yeah, it is. Uh, it's definitely a room Aerobic. for improvement. Yeah, because, yeah, you're right. You're, you're physically active. You're connecting with your spouse or loved one mm -hmm. in a public fashion, which is always kind of healthy, usually. Mm -hmm. And depending on the hustle, I haven't done that for a while. It's a 70s term. <laughs> There's a little work out there, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, you're doing the YMCA. Right. You're, you're definitely uh, expending energy and moving, not necessarily naturally for some people, depending on how well they dance. But yeah, and, and there are formalized dance classes and instruction available for people. I know high schoolers have dances, and they're not always expending a lot of energy per se, but it's another one of those things, like team sports, it seems like it's lost for adults, like we don't have as many chances to just go to dances right. as, as maybe we, we did or could. But uh, barring that, dancing is a great way to get physically active and socially involved. Uh, number five, I've got joining a group fitness class. Invite your friends to sign up for an exercise class together. There's an endless variety of formats to choose from. Water aerobics, yoga, Pilates, martial arts, Zumba, cardio boxing, 
cycling. There's boot camps you can even do. You're sure to find something that you'll enjoy that'll make you sweat and laugh. So group fitness, you know, that's kind of what it's about. That's sort of the most literal uh, version of what I'm trying to mention here is With getting together as a group, but you're doing something that's very specifically fitness related. So I think there's a, uh, most of those that you mentioned are available at the community Y. Muscatine does have the community Y, and you can't go wrong with that. And there are other opportunities as well. We're not going to name them all, but there are others, and there might be a need for more. And actually, I'm thinking about providing a couple opportunities later on as I progress through my wellness endeavors as well. So, but yeah, there's definitely opportunities right here. We're in all going to learn the hustle from Chad. <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't mind having a little dance class. How about number six? Is consider small group personal training. So, if you're interested in getting sh in shape, I recommend being physically active with respect to strength training twice a week. And to do that, you don't necessarily need to hire a, a personal trainer, but you could do it with a group of friends. Small group training sessions are more fun and often less costly than one-on-one -on -one sessions. Just have to look for a, pers a certified personal trainer who offers group sessions and invite a friend or two to join you. So there's another way that you could uh, get physically active and involve a social aspect to it. It's just kind of fun to suffer as a group. And if you're like me, I don't it's suffering, but I enjoy it, mm -hmm. you know, and I'm not the only one. You feel it's rewarding after you've worked out or after you've gone for a walk. There's just something about it that's rewarding. So that's number, number six. Number seven, enjoy seasonal activities. So we've got a couple ideas here, but make fitness a year-long year activity. In Iowa, we've got four very specific seasons, and each one can offer you something new. Here I'm showing camping. We can also talk about fishing, sailing, something that allows you to maintain your adventurous spirit and try new sports. Um, snowshoeing, skiing, any other seasonal activities you can think of. There's some things that just work in different seasons. Why not allow that to help you decide what to do and what time of year? Well, and if you're not into all the sports equipment that you need to purchase for all of those different kinds of things, walking is always a good thing to do in seasons. And the seasons change, so your, your scenery will change. Yeah. So embrace the seasons and enjoy those activities that are specific to the season. So when you're brainstorming ways to be physically and socially active, let the season kind of help guide you accordingly as well. Certain things make sense at different times that you're golfing, um, more prone to be spring, summer, fall, skiing in the winter. How about number eight, our last one, get out of town through an active vacation. <laughs> that gal is just having fun. She's kayaking and uh -huh. she is happy. Taking an active vacation together and enjoy walking tours, bike tours, kayaking, golf, go on a picture safari, explore the bell towers of medieval cathedrals. If you've got the ambitions to get out of the country, tour museums. I know when I tour a museum, I'm tired by the end of the day. Yeah. So something's going on. Um, historical sites are also great ways to learn a lot while getting active. A lot of historical sites talk about moving natural naturally, the, the Egyptian pyramids or the Mayan ruins, those are a little bit ambitious vacations. Sure. But most historical sites, there weren't elevators, there's lots of walking involved. So there's nothing like a shared experience to bring friends close together. Mm -hmm. And along those lines, talk about a staycation or, or ways to stay physically and socially active right here in Muscatine, there is a opportunity to participate in Tai Chi free of charge. So, John, we've got some video. We actually went to a Tai Chi. I wanted to learn a little bit more about creating this mind-body connection. So we've got some footage. Currently, depending on when you're watching this episode, on Wednesdays at noon, there is actually an opportunity mm -hmm. to just show up at the different places throughout Muscatine and participate in Tai Chi. And if you are interested in doing that, you can do it formally through places like the Y, per se, or you can do it just... Uh, I think this one is through Muscatine Physical Therapy, Kayleen Poggle, isn't it? So if you want to find out where the, the next place is, and she moves around to the different parks. She's going through, essentially we're at the riverfront. Now each month they rotate to a different scenic location. I'm sure they'll be doing this in uh, different times of the year and if you miss it this season no worries but they go to different scenic locations which I thought is very clever and each month they rotate it up this month they were at the riverfront and we're watching her basically demonstrate some of the moves and as you can see this is Tai Chi studies have concluded that participating in Tai Chi for 30 minutes three times a week for at least three months can slow bone loss and osteoporosis lower your blood pressure lessen anxiety improve your sleep, increase functional mobility and balance, enhance circulation, and improve one's cholesterol profile. 
Tai Chi is a gentle exercise and can be performed by people of any age to help with your health and natural healing. Natural healing. As you can see, any age, it's gentle, and these people might not be consciously thinking about all those benefits I just mentioned, but that is happening. And this is Tai Chi. Jane, have you ever done Tai Chi, or are you kind of familiar with what you're seeing here? I'm familiar with what I'm seeing. I really want to do this. I think this would be a, a low impact, a great way to yep. start exercising, and uh, Kayleen makes it a lot of fun. Yeah, and uh, we're, we're in the shade there, and as you can see, the Maid of the Mist is in the background, so we've got kids and families playing and enjoying the riverfront, and these moves, these people that are, are being shown here, they've all been doing it for a while, so they've kind of got the routine, not necessarily mastered, but they've got some of the moves down. I was doing it, and I was new, so I had to kind of look over my shoulder a lot, but Colleen would give you a handout, essentially, that would give you the moves so you could practice at home, and eventually you could get uh, really kind of proficient, but as you can see, it's not at a fast pace, it's easy to learn, and when you get the moves down, now you start to really get an opportunity to do what's really important with this, which is relax. This is very relaxing. When I was doing it, I found myself really getting connected with my mind and my body, and it was a great way to exercise through, uh, in a way that's been proven through research to have a very wide variety of health benefits, but also the one thing that we got to notice and always appreciate is that these people that do this are friends. They're forming relationships. They chat before and after, and they're connecting with each other, and they're getting that added socially active benefit in addition to the physical activity. And yeah, Jane, if you're thinking about doing this, I would say, what's stopping you? You know, and. Hopefully nothing because they've tried to make it convenient. This particular one is at 12.15 mm -hmm. to 12.45, so it's a lunch it's a hour. half hour. Yep. yep. So it fits a lot, and if it doesn't fit specifically, you know, there's other ways to do Tai Chi. There's classes involved, and you can learn how to do it on your own. The way I like to remember what Tai Chi is, is it's moving meditation. So if, for me, to meditate in a, in a sitting position sounds stressful. I know that kind of might be, you know, sound humorous, but I like this because you get a move while you're meditating. So once you've got the moves down, you're meditating, you're, you're, you're calming, you're, you're thinking, you're focusing on the breathing. She's very, uh, uh, Tai Chi instructors help you focus on, your, on breathing with your, through your diaphragm and or through, you know, through a proper process that allows you to really feel each breath and takes you almost, it's almost an out of body experience if you do this correctly. And rotation of all the muscles too. All the muscles get engaged flexibility, mobility. Now, believe it or not, I'm sure you believe this, but as you age, if you don't get up and, and keep yourself, keep your body attempting to balance itself, it'll eventually lose that ability. Right. And, that, and, and you might have witnessed that some people that are confined to uh, nursing homes, maybe they weren't as astute about preventing some of their mobility issues. And Tai Chi, if you're, if you're thinking about it, it, this show is about prevention. Tai Chi will prevent you from getting to the point where you lose your balance and your coordination. It helps with osteoporosis. I mean, isn't that an amazing yes. benefit? Mm -hmm. uh, cholesterol helps your sleep better. Wow. I mean, and when I was doing it, I'll be honest, it, it wasn't really apparent why all that would work. You just kind of have to believe in the process, and it just takes three times a week for 30 minutes, and you'll get all these benefits. It takes a few months for it to really kick in, but if you stay the course, it's something you'll look forward to doing. It's, it was fun. It wasn't like, oh, I got this intense, vigorous <laughs> workout to do. No, it was like, wow, I get to take a chance to downshift naturally, unwind, take a break from my work day. If you're retired, then just give yourself something to do in the middle of your day and enjoy Tai Chi. So that's going to wrap up. Our episode this week, we've been talking about connecting and through, specifically through belonging to faith-based communities. Hopefully you've uh, uh, maybe considered reconnecting or continuing to connect with your, with your faith-based community as mm -hmm. well. So we're going to move right along and conclude this week's episode. Next week we're going to talk with Nancy Dew. We're going to be talking about the 80% rule and dieting myths. So we've got a whole bunch of different things we're talking about. So stay tuned to that episode and thanks for watching. Bye-bye.